uh, Professor Volodya Retar, who will speak about uh, very interesting non-cumulative recurrences. Okay, so thank you. So thank you. Um, so I will talk about and so I talked about this I believe approximately a year ago but today I will talk about sort of geometric approach It is also, as it was a year ago, just a joint board with uh, Arkady Bench. Okay, so now let me remind just uh, uh, a few basic things. So first of all, I suppose you have a variables x1, x2, say xm, then a uh, monomial, monomial just an expression, say x1 to the power d1, x2 to the power d2, xm, and so d1, p2, dm. Are uh, integers, so maybe negative integers, and this is why we call it Laurent. And um, uh, so Laurent uh, polynomial is actually a sum of Laurent monomials. So we go with some. Now let me explain what is a Laurent phenomenon. Uh, now suppose you have a graph, say a direct graph, so those are vertices and edges, and to each vertex you associate actually say n variables, let's say x1, v, Now to any edge, if you have an edge from B, say, to W, uh, then uh, you have just a formula for Xi. Xi. Also, N will be the same all the time. B is just V uh, to variables attached to the vertex W, and uh, uh, this is, and you require that uh, this is just a Laurent polynomial for all i. So this one. And now let me talk just a uh, Laurent map. Attached to, to this vertex, W. So it's not a primitive. Uh, ah, sorry? 
it's, it's, it's a polynomial then. Yes, it's a polynomial. So it's no longer a primitive algorithm. Or the relation. Um, uh, well, uh, I don't say that they so, so they all belong to some algebra. So all these variables belong to some algebra. Ah. Well, then, then you can just this. Oh, so they're probably dependent variables. Yes. Not dependent variables. Yeah. No, no, they are yeah. not. Uh, they are not independent. Yeah. So I will give examples. And then, so the definition. So just we have. Just the uh, one for this situation. Uh, if uh, just compositions, compositions <laughs> of uh, say. just a uh, few examples. So the first example is, so suppose you have just three vertices, say V1, V2, V3, and here you have just here you attach variables x1, y1, here x2, y2, here x3, y3. And they're connected with the, with the following way. <coughs> so xi plus y equals yi, and y i plus 1 equals x. Well, uh, this is inverse. And I is going from well, one to two. Uh, then what you have here is you have just x two equals y one y one. So y two is x one plus y one. And then you have x three will be equals to x one plus y one inverse. And well, y three, whatever. And this is not Laurent phenomenon because you don't know how to invert this. This will just fail. Okay. So it shows that uh, this situation is rather rare, but still it's very interesting. Now another example is that you have say the one. Two, three, and so up to n. And here to v1 that corresponds, say, x1, x2, to v2 corresponds variables that we denote x2, x3. Here you have x3, x4, and so on. And the formula looks like this you have x i plus 1 equals, say, 1 plus x i r i. 
x pi minus 1 inverse. So that's the Laran phenomenon. And now then the, the theorem says, let's say that r i equals say r1 if uh, i is odd, r2 if i is even. And uh, uh, then So then say any xk can be written as a moron polynomial in say x1, x2. This is a conjecture. Yes, yeah, okay. So the story was so the following, so these four commutative variables it follows from uh, so the theory of uh, commutative cluster algebras of uh, Fomin and uh, Zelewinski. Uh, well, in the non-commutative case was proved by uh, Ben Stein and me. Uh, and uh, there are other proofs uh, just uh, so as well. Okay, so that's this one. But again, so now again, let me say that in for commutative case, in this commutative case, all the variables are commutative. Bologna, yeah, well, yeah. yeah. you, in particular, your proof implies the commutative proof. Uh, yes, 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 yes. So one commutative proof. Is uh, your proof easier than the from the Levitsky proof? Uh, no, that's different. Uh, no, it was just different. It's, uh, it won't be easier. It's, it's different. I believe that uh, maybe uh, quantum case, uh, its resemblance with the quantum case that, that was proved by Bernstein and Zelovitz. Uh, you could be beautiful and elementary. So maybe you could. Uh, no, our, our proof is elementary. Unfortunately, it doesn't. We cannot claim that all coefficients will be uh, positive integers. Oh, so they can also prove. Uh, yes. So one can also prove that. Uh, but usually, no. Oh, in this case, usually yes, it's still open. Case. But in this case, yes. In this case, it's uh, no, 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 so no, no, it's proved in this case. Yeah. So you can prove more. Yeah. You, you can prove more, but using actually more refined methods, so to speak. So in the case that there is just a theory of uh, cluster algebras, uh, by uh, Amin and Zolinsky, that provides actually a general approach to the Laurent phenomenon, basically, this, this one. In the non-commutative case, you have to, <coughs> well, we approach so the theory of uh, non-commutative cluster algebras, but uh, before, of course, so one, one has to consider interesting examples. Let me consider one more important example, and I will start with the commutative case. And so let's assume that you have a polygon Pn, which, well, suppose it's inscribed in a circle, or something like this. And you can see the soldier, the following, you can see the algebra generated by Xij, where Ij is actually non-directed port, and you impose the following condition. It's important for me, so I would like to in the center.
Uh, so the condition of the following, so if you have, well, just a quadrilateral, uh, then uh, with a well, diagonal, then you impose the condition psi x i k x j l equals to x i j x k l plus x uh, i l x j k. So, which means that the product of elementary is corresponding to diagonals is actually sum of products corresponding to, to the opposite side. And uh, so it's called Ptolemy uh, or, or sometimes group relations. Group relations. So I will explain why is that. And uh, the idea is so the following. So consider so for so and consider actually the, the, any any triangulation. triangulation you can change you allow to exchange diagonal for example you may consider this uh, uh, this quadrilateral then sort of erase this and put this diagonal then according to this relation so the new diagonal will be expressed say xjl for example will be expressed as Laurent polynomials in this uh, variable because you can divide by xij. And uh, so if you consider just the graph and so vertices are just the triangulations and edges say from delta to delta prime are just elementary elementary transformations and elementary transformations exactly means that you replace one diagonal by another diagonal uh, then the theorem says that Just in this case, is it non commutative or commutative? Uh, so far, it's commutative. Yeah. I will give just this is due this, to formula uh, Davidsky. Yes, that's due to, to formula Davidsky. One of the basic examples, and then I will just I will spend some time explaining how to get non commutative <coughs> analog of this. Okay. Um, so the thing is that, um, for example, if you have just this triangulation, and this is your new chord, then these variables can be expressed as a Laurent polynomial in all those guys, so sides and this chord. Okay, and now the proof actually, I saw the first proof was given by Famin and Zelovinsky, and then uh, Schiffler uh, just gave an exact combinatorial dis 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 
description of this polynomial. I will not talk about uh, Schiffler's result because it will fall from non-commutative version. Okay, just a few comments. So why Ptolemy? And uh, Ptolemy means that if you have just a quadrilateral lateral which is inscribed in the circles and x and i, j are just lengths of these guys, then you have exactly this uh, formula. I, I proved it to my students by the Newton method just a week ago. Just sort of fun. And uh, so this is why this is Ptolemy. Now why it is uh, Blucher? And so the blue was and the blue is because if you have, for example, this two by n matrix. careful with the ends, but it can be done. Okay, and uh, so when we try to understand so the non-commutative situation, the idea was that we have to generalize this thing, and so the question was why. Okay, and now just briefly what I saw briefly, uh, I don't know what are Ptolemy relations in the uh, non-commutative case, but we knew what are analog of uh, Blücher relations. Uh, they were developed by Gelfand and me in 19, 1997, so the first publication. And so I will just explain what one can do just with this. All right. Mm -hmm. um, so the relations actually that will be replaced. Uh, so this will be replaced. This the suggestion is the following. First, you consider now just directed forms. I J, and you introduce variables x i j, but they are not equal to. So they are just interesting. And uh, so we suggest to replace this relation by the, the following one. Let me just do it quickly. And the relation looks like this. X J L is equal to X J K xik inverse xil plus xji xki inverse xkl and uh, but and but also you have the relations of this type xij xj minus one I and okay. Uh, so now let's see what uh, this. Uh, let's try to analyze this. First of all, in the commutative case, uh, this relation is just empty. Uh, this one, if you identify, say, I K with a ki, and if this is commutes, then you can move xi k 
to the left part, and you have exactly this relation. Okay, so it's just this. Okay, now, what is the advantage of writing this? And so suppose, and again, so we have this quadrilateral, so let's see what happens. I, G, K, L. So this, say, corresponds to a path from to J. But suppose you cannot move here, and suppose you know only this diagonal, the other one. Then you can move uh, the following thing. So you can move from J to K. Then you go from K to I into the opposite direction. This is why you have inverse here. This is L, yeah? The bottom, L. Oh, uh, L, yes. So you go this, then in this direction, then you arrive here. And you can go also go to this direction, this, opposite to this, and then you arrive here. Um, so you can look this as maps in some categories or just uh, elements associated with directed graphs, but that's, uh, so that's an advantage to write this in this form. And now I will prove actually that with this generalization, uh, that's uh, the generalization of this theorem is true, but I will give an exact combinatorial description. But first, let me explain why we came to this uh, thing. All right. Um, so, so I have to explain now the theory of so-called quasi-local relations. But I will do this only for two times and matrices. But uh, the whole theory is this for a man. I will replace this determinant in the non-commutative case. And the, in the non-commutative case, you may introduce four, actually, four versions of the determinant, but I will need only two now. And one is that I can sort of, I have this matrix, but I will start with this element. And this can be written. And then I have the following expression. That's a famous quasi <laughs> Yes, that's a special notion of quasi determinants. A quasi determinant, so that's one expression. And uh, also, you can see that, that you can treat those elements as maps in some category, and then you can just uh, take the composition. And in the commutative case, this is basically determinant, but divided by this one, well, up to a sign. And then I will need another one. So basically, then I'll look at this, but it will be written like this. Sort of a quasi Euclidean coordinate. So again, uh, in this definition, of course, A is R just pure non commutative elements. So quasi Euclidean uh, coordinates. Well, they denote it like this. And they are written the following that you have A. Okay. 